I kind of knew what I was getting into when I checked this gun out from Handgun Haven. I had my suspicions. And <laughs> to kill the suspense of the GRV, I was right. And I will call this shotgun a clickbait shotgun. Clickbait shotgun. Or for short, a clickbait gun. First time I've ever used that terminology in a GRV anywhere in TMP. Not the term clickbait. You guys have seen that forever, but paired up with gun might be kind of new. And I bet you know exactly what I mean with that phrase. A clickbait gun. That's right. One that looks really cool. And then when you dig into it, you kind of go, that, that didn't really deliver on what I expected. Lean into it. Yeah, I am killing the suspense of this GRV. I don't care. And I suspected it would be that way. I hoped it wouldn't be that way. And what do you know? I was right. It's a clickbait shotgun. It is. And as a reminder, dudes, and I'm directing this to the general YouTube audience, not to my TMPers, definitely not to my TMP Patreon members. No. To a general YouTube audience that may click on a video here and there that do not subscribe to Nothing Fancy, that jump in once in a great while, watch my videos. I'm not really a gun tuber. As a reminder, I'm not. I'm a gear adventure channel that has guns as part of his content flow. It's been that way for over 14 years, but I'm not a gun tuber. And if I was, I, I would have jumped at a gun like this a long time ago because when we made money in ads, we don't now, but once upon a year we could, this would have got a lot of views. And maybe this video does because guys like how it looks. It's a freaking 12 gauge bullpup. What's not to like? Clickbait. It's like, you know, the cleavage shot on a, on a not a gun review, but a car review. So you got a nice cleavage shot of a girl in a bikini and it's talking about a Lamborghini or this or that car show guys will say what's up with that video and they click to see the cleavage it doesn't deliver and then what then they're pissed they're like oh that was such clickbait yeah but you watched it you oh, bought the shotgun nice. it's your fault you fell for it be more informed be more discriminating so says nothing fancy and that's what this video is all about getting to the bottom of this shotgun imported by rock island armory RIA, currently, subject to change, who knows, is produced by Dara, Dara, whatever it is, Arms in Turkey. It is a Turkish produced shotgun. And as you can see, bullpup configuration, 12 gauge chambering, three inch chambering, magazine fed bullpup. It does present well. It does look cool, but it's clickbait. It's clickbait. Again, I hoped it wouldn't be that way, but from my testing, I'm ruining, I know, the suspense of the GRV. Usually I wait to the end to tell you this. It's not good. Now, granted, this is one example. Granted, they could improve this in the future. And it may become I viable. I suspect it will not be. It seems very seems conceptual kind of in nature and not tested to me. What do I mean by that? I mean, guys get together and they probably watch a lot of video games. They design a gun that will attract the video game player. They don't really hard test it and they don't really know what they're doing. They don't know how, they don't know how to put together a military spec, and I'm using that term loosely, something that can be hard used and really counted upon. Uh, from my take and from my testing and me fondling this gun for hour after hour, this ain't it. Back to the drawing table, it needs to go. Again, one example, I didn't shoot it like tons and tons and tons, and this data could be completely wrong. <laughs> but it's my opinion, and I am after the truth. I'm not beholden to Rock Island Armory. I'm not beholden to the manufacturer. The only people that support me are my donors. That's it. I get no ad money from this video. Definitely not. It's been that way this a long time. A lot. It's just it truth as I see it. Shoot. And again, I could be completely true. wrong. This, by the way, is called the VRBP 100. It is made by that company I just talked about, or Arms Corps, or whoever's making it. Kind of confusing, actually. That's what there are the, other uh, models it makes. Power piston in there it. is the VR80, the VRPA40. Did I say that right? VRPA40. Yeah, it's a pump action, I believe, magazine fed shotgun, five rounder. And then the M16 ish. VR60. And I was 
and I may review some of those in the future, I don't know. But there are other models in the lineup. Maybe you own one and you're interested in this gun. Maybe you have this one. The very poorly named, by the way, VRPP100. Confusing, that's my first rant, and you're gonna hear a couple rants coming in the video. I know you guys like it. Not fancy, keep ranting, we love it. Roger that, but they're always legit. I don't rant just to rant. Uh, the name is horrible. I cannot remember the name. VRBP100. I was calling it out in the field, the VR100, the BP100. We got confused. And then if you throw in the other models in there, they're just poorly named. Come on now. And whatever, you know, it, it could have been named a lot better. And there's some great names out there. Name it a name. Maybe after an animal. I don't know, call it the Snail 1000. <laughs> the Snail 1000, I like that. But it is called the VRBP 100. Here we go with the Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll have my opinion. I will give you data. Again, I'm not going to say I'm the all-knowing expert on this gun. I'm just sharing what I found out about it and what I brought back from the field. Obviously, it's a compact 20-inch barreled 12-gauge bullpup shotgun. The first of its type I've ever reviewed in TMP. Really, and like I mentioned at the outset, if I was a gun tuber, I would have reviewed this really early on because it looks cool and it will attract a lot of viewers. A lot of guys coming off the video game paddles will go, oh dude, check that out. Same guy that bought it on the gun room or the gun show shelf that saw it. Dude, that looks so cool, I'm buying it. Yeah, that guy. But as you can see, I've taken my time to review such a shotgun. Here we go with philosophy of use. What would you use it for? GTW? Um, you probably know the answer to that just from my introduction. Absolutely not. Go to war shotgun has to be reliable in all situations. It has to be reliable in bad weather, good weather, cold conditions, hot conditions, dropped on con concrete, brought in and out of vehicles, whether it be armored vehicles, jeeps, trucks. It needs to be super, super tough. Think police cruiser shotgun, Remington 870, Mossberg 500. Mossberg 590, Winchester 1300, Winchester SXP, FN PA-12. That type of shotgun, super, super reliable. Oh, it's also semi-autos. I mentioned a bunch of pumps, but how about the Jerry Miculet 930, the brand new 940, super excellent. The Benelli's, given the right loads, absolutely. The FN SLP shotgun, yeah, those types. Those are GTW ready. I'll give them a GTW stamp of approval from Nut and Fancy to the manufacturer. I ain't going to do it with this one. You'll see why. Okay? And maybe the future will change. Maybe future generations will fix the issues I have with this gun. But I would say no. That means I would not recommend it for home defense. I wouldn't recommend it as a police cruiser shotgun. Absolutely not. I wouldn't recommend it for without rule of law. Uh, recreational shooting? No. I wouldn't recommend it for that either. I'll tell you why. Uh, collectability, no. Uh, coolness, no. <laughs> How about no, 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 no. You dial in for the truth, that's what I'm giving you. I don't recommend it for anything. Subject to change. Just saying, subject to change, but uh, POU, no. no. I'd much rather have, by the way, a standard uh, configuration, semi-auto shotgun. They're easier to run. I have a love-hate, mostly hate, relationship with bullpups in general. I think they're difficult to run. The controls are placed weirdly. They have awful triggers. This one does. Uh, it's hard to reload, especially with big, bulky magazines like the BRBP100. <laughs> Robotic voice. Shotgun. They're just weird. They're awkward. I prefer not to run them. I just regular would rather have an AR-15 platform or something like it. Maybe the VR60 would be better. I don't know. They're awkward. So, no, 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 no. On we go with features of the gun. First up, it's heavy. Eight pounds, six ounces. I know, I've brought heavy bull pups to table before. I'm going to show you one before the review is over. They're recommended. It is a 12 gauge. I understand that. It does have heavy magazines. This is a five rounder. This is a nine rounder. I get it. I'm on board with that. But compared to the standard configuration semi-auto shotguns, especially the newer ones that have been produced, like the Stoger 3000, that wasn't that heavy. Uh, I would prefer it. 
The upside to that is it does have a 20 inch barrel and the VRP PPPPP 100. That's good. Screw in chokes. That's good, right? Uh, that's a plus. So that's more velocity out of your 12 gauge shot shell of choice. Um, so that's a plus. I mean, a 20 inch barrel on a standard configuration would have a very long overall length. This is only 32 inches OAL. Not bad, not bad. Here's your charging handle and first rant, I pretty much hate it. I don't like the placement of it. I don't think it's big enough. I don't think it's positive enough. And it looks like it's backed with what appears to be an airsoft spring. <laughs> Another exposed spring. I know, it's just bizarre. In fact, the whole gun presents like an airsoft gun to me. Just my mileage, it does. It seems like an airsoft gun. Especially when this happens during shooting. So this is the foregrip right here, right? Very Tavor-ish. Hmm, you might see that gun, like I mentioned. Very Tavor-ish. And it's only a simple fix. I mean, this cap right here just came loose. You just tighten it down. But this is what I'm talking about. It's just kind of... Hokey, hokey for a combat shotgun. You shouldn't have that coming loose. And it's more than just that. You're gonna see this repeating over and over in the VRBB 100. Again, horrible name. Uh, I don't like the charging handle. I find even though it's non-reciprocating, I was getting battered by it. So as a right-handed shooter, I'm up here trying to control buckshot. What happens, this thing comes back and batters my hand. I had to ha hold it like this. You may see that in the video or just trying to get away from that charging handle, come, charging handle coming back and smacking my hand. The crew and I said that all along. We just didn't like it. Moreover, I don't like the tapered fore end on a 12 gauge shotgun. On a 223, yeah, I can take it. I'll usually throw a VG on it. I don't think it's so good. Low traction right here, absolutely none actually. Yeah. And that's VRP not in and of itself VRP a deal breaker because you can put skateboard tape on this shotgun to resolve it and that would help a lot, it would. But I don't like the taper. I don't like the taper coming up here because where does it send me? Right to the charging handle. And then as I experience a recoil, bang, 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 into the thumb it goes. I don't like it. It was super annoying. Maybe your mileage is different. I'm just telling you my opinion. I think the charging handle is too small. I think it should be a folding style like the Tavor or some other designs that fold on the side and then you can charge it and then they're kind of out of the way if you have to go that route. And also it would be nice if it was changeable to the right side of the gun. Okay, so you don't have that feature on the VRBP. Okay, that's a rant, uh, more to come, trust me. You do have quick detachable cups here. There's one here, one here at the back of the bullpup. That's cool, thumbs up for that. Uh, large Picatinny rail. I can't really tell you if it shifted or not. Uh, because these damn sights suck so much. Here we go with another rant. Rant, not rant. Okay, here you go. Uh, these sights are worse than airsoft sights. As we shot them, they would do this. They'd self-fold. That's the first thing we hated about them. So on a, on a 12 gauge shotgun, you don't put on locking sights. And these are the primary sights on the gun. They're not uh, like backups. Well, I don't think, I mean, I guess you could put a, a red dot on it for sure, but come on, people. Come on, Turkey, Dara Arms, whoever you are. Uh, dude, and, and the sight picture is horrendous. I can't really show you here. This blade right here is super fat. It's almost like a short Lovely triangle. Test. Okay. And so it doesn't really pop up. Yeah, it's kind of HK-ish with a half hood on it. Uh, I just didn't like it. I mean, we shot it and it worked kind of, but we were condemning the sights. We're like, come on now. First thing I would do is peel the sights off, put on some Mac poles or something like that, or red dot. But guess what? It's more money spent on this click bait shotgun. I didn't like the safety, don't like the safety. It appears to be made out of pot metal. Yeah, it's like going bright already just in my short testing. I could be wrong, it could be hardened steel, I don't know. Uh, it is positive, that's good. But here's what I don't like about the design. And this is what I mean about a conceptual design where guys don't really shoot it or they don't really know guns. This whole raised ridge right here, I guess it's designed to be more safe so you don't accidentally uh, turn off the safety. It just gets in the way. I don't see that on an AR-15, so here, it's so recessed, it's hard to access. So, you know, is it a, a showstopper? I would say almost. I hate that feature. I think the safety is too small, so you don't have a lot of leverage, and it's in, and it's completely occluded by this molding on the bullpup stock. End of rant on that. 
The grip itself is okay. It looks like a Mako grip. I think that was a maker, the Mako grip for AR-15s. It's okay, the angle's fine. It does have finger grooves in it. Nah, <sighs> See, that shows me they're not really in tune with current trends in the market because the trend is get rid of finger grooves because hand sizes are so different. Uh, that's been out for some time, that's not new. So, but they put finger grooves in it. They should have eliminated that, just give really positive traction. The traction you would see on some of the pistols that I've shown you. Shown you. Good trigger guard. Uh, no problems with that. Takes us to the trigger. It's absolutely awful. Okay. I can't even pull it on. Uh, well, I could, but I won't. It's 10 pounds, 4 ounces. With a lot of creep. Uh, it eventually cooks off, but I hate the trigger. I don't like the blade. It's too short. It is made of steel, apparently. Maybe pop metal. I don't know. Uh, it's a bullpup design, so you can't use an AR-15 trigger. I get it. Uh, and there's more linkage going on here. I get that too, but it's horrendous. I hate the trigger. Mm, there you go. Rant on that complete. Now that takes us, of course, to the magazine of this bullpup shotgun, the VRBP100. I think I will just call it the VR100 for simplicity's sake. What do you think of the magazines, nothing fancy? Well, they do offer good capacity. They make a 19 rounder for this sucker. It looks freaking ridiculous. It's like a banana. It's not practical at all, but it is out there if you want it. I did not test that. I have the five round magazines. I have the nine round magazine. This is what I tested. The first thing I hate about them, here comes another rant, is their weight. They're made of steel. Am I the only person in the world that cares about weight? It seems that way, year after year, seriously. This sucker, the five rounder, weighs 11 and a half ounces. This weighs empty 18 ounces, over a pound, without anything in it. And the weight I gave you was without a magazine, I believe. That makes it even heavier. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like the slits in this one. Dirt can get in. Yeah, and then what happens? Then it becomes completely unreliable. I don't like how difficult they are to load. Now, again, I came up to periscope depth, like I'm saying these days. I looked around at what some other people were saying about this VRBP 100 shotgun, and there was a lot of positive stuff. And I was like, what the freak, man? <laughs> again, I just chart my own course. Some dude was like saying, oh, the magazines are really easy to load. I didn't find that to be the case at all. I find it difficult to load. Maybe I'm just a wussy. The problem is the magazine is stiff to begin with, which is okay for function. I'm okay with that. But you have the brass rims on the shot shells. So you can't like slide them across each other like you can a brass cartridge. 223, 9 mil, 40, 45, 308, like that. It doesn't work that way. So you have to push down lift over the rim, rant complete, eh, whatever. Uh, yeah, magazine fed, yeah. Uh, good luck reloading it because you probably won't have LBE that can accommodate these huge magazines. Again, not exclusive to the VRBP 100, VR 100. Uh, I've said that about all magazine 12 gauge shotguns. Uh, if you're gonna carry it, good luck. They're ungainly. It is a huge downside to the system. That being said, the rounds capacity is good if it works. We'll get to that in just a second. Here's your magazine release right here. I found it awkward to use. I'm a goofball though. Maybe I'm just a goofball. I admit that. Uh, it's way back by my shoulder. You'll probably see us flailing with it. Whatever, there's your action release, kind of AR-15-ish. Again, it's aft position. There's a takedown lever, by the way, the really poor instructions say, make sure it's not rotated like that. I didn't try it, but they said if it is rotated down like that, you could have a problem. Here it is, right there in that step. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of the manual, it's just horrible. It's just so bad. It's lightweight, not much in there. Doesn't show you the nomenclature of everything. There are some specifications in there. A very hard to see parts diagram. Can you even get parts for this gun? I don't know. There's your very complicated takedown procedure. I didn't do it, but uh, it looks to be a complete pain. Apparently it was starting the field strip process on its own with the loosening of that cap, by the way. 
<laughs> and there's a reminder what your screw and chokes do. Fair enough, and that's it. That's your manual. We'll come back to that. There's something else I wanna point out. Uh, back to features though. Now let's consider the adjustable cheek piece on this VR100 shotgun. Hey, nothing fancy, that's not the name. Okay, the VRBP100 shotgun. There you go, now you're happy. Yeah, adjustable cheek piece. Is it awesome, nothing fancy? The truth, not really, not really. I'm not gonna say it's awful, it isn't. It does present rather airsofty to me, like the whole freaking gun does. For instance, look at the adjustment knob. So this is a polymer sleeve on the bolt. You can see the exposed bolt head there. Maybe over time, and this is just from experience in other applications, whether they're firearms or tools, power tools, these things seem like they break off. And so now you just have the bolt on there and then what do you do? It just seems hokey. The adjustment uh, is firm enough, like when you raise it up, it's gonna sound air softy, here we go. A little bit. Uh, we tighten it, it does stay in position when new. I would love to check in it uh, with it after a lot of use, but look at the flex. Okay, just rather air softy. That's just, that's just what I'm saying. That's kind of the whole flavor I have of this gun, air softy. When we tested it, we had it in its lowest position. And if you have it there and just leave it, I think you'll be okay. You need it in its lowest position to sight through the awful sights, which will fold down on you during firing, like I said. If you do mount a red dot on it in your airsoft games, <laughs> I'm sorry, not airsoft games, but in your combat shooting practice, uh, then you would raise a cheek piece. Let me know in comment if it works great for you over time. If you have one of these, I could be completely wrong. I admit it. There's your adjustable length of pull. I didn't change a stack on these because I'm tall and it worked for me pretty good. It is angled downward a little bit. And uh, that's pretty much the features down and dirty on the VRBP 100. Oh yeah, deflection plate here, supposedly protecting left-handed shooters. I doubt it. Now Jardine, our left-handed crew member, did not help me shoot this. I don't know if I would have let him because it looks like it would have smacked him right in the face. Uh, there's your ejection port right here. Uh, this side for a magazine release. Ambidextrous safety lever, I didn't mention that. Mm, there you go. How did it shoot? This is a nitty gritty, right? The bottom line on the VRBP 100 ma sure magazine shot fed load. shotgun. How did it shoot? Nothing fancy. Did you love it? Did you hate it? I think you know the answer, dudes. From the tone of my review so far, you know the answer. Right, but let's go back to the manual. I said I would do this. Yeah. Is it really important? Mm, or not. I don't really know, but there is a break-in procedure for the VR100. Here it is. It says quality shot shells only. Copy, did that. Two and three quarter inch, yep, did that. Three dram, yep, did that. Minimum of one and one eighth ounce of shot, yep, did that. But then it says minimum of 50 rounds. I don't know if I did that. I did like 25 rounds, mixture of pheasant loads, high base 12 gauge shot, sh shot shells, and buckshot. We did that. I didn't do 50 because I didn't read the manual before and I don't think a lot of people will, but that should have been sufficient. The first thing we noticed is that it was not reliable. Even after my short break-in, and I discussed their break-in and then what I did, is that a factor you decide? Uh, but it was not reliable. It had all kinds of problems. Big surprise. It's a clickbait shotgun, dudes. Uh, forget that break-in procedure. That's what I say. Because the company should do that. That'll work. You shouldn't deliver a gun that needs that style of break-in. You do it at the factory. You know, I, I know other guns say break-in, but I just have a problem with it. Uh, of course, the excuse patrol will show up and they go, well, you know, there's parts that need to be mated. It's pretty common in the fire, firearms world. Um, I, I say my break-in procedure should have been sufficient, right? And maybe I was going to take this back out on another outing, run more buckshot through it, and to see if it was reliable. But that here's the deal, dudes. And I'm thing. being completely honest again. I don't enjoy shooting it. It's not a fun gun to shoot. It's all about looks, not about performance. It recoils a lot. No, I'm not a pussy for recoil. 
Maybe I am, but I shoot a lot of guns with recoil. I just didn't like it. I was getting smacked by the charging handle. The sights were flipping down on themselves. The controls are jacked up for me. It wasn't fun to shoot. It wasn't. I didn't enjoy it. And so I'm not motivated to take I'm it back out and Max. spend more money on it. Especially during this pandemic when expensive it's shotgun shells, mind. especially buckshot or pheasant loads, are harder to come by. So I'm just going to call the, the testing good. It jammed a lot and we took it on multiple outings with various loads. Granted, plenty of birdshot shot through it, but it had the lightweight piston. Here's the heavy piston. That wasn't in it at any time and just all kinds of reliability issues. I think Tactical Doodle shot it with me and he was laughing. He was, he was like, man, this thing is like that UTAS gun. Do you remember that review? The UTAS 15? Yeah, the UT-15. I was one of the first voices to condemn that gun. And I said, this thing's a piece of crap. I caught all types of crap for it. I mean, guys were like, you don't know how to shoot a pump action shotgun. You're short stroking it, nothing. Not really, it's just crap. And I predicted it would fail in the marketplace. Sure enough, it has. Even though UTAS has attempted to correct it with a Gen 2, Gen 3, I don't see UTAS 15s anywhere anywhere or UTS 15s anywhere. They have completely failed in the marketplace. But again, it too was a clickbait shotgun. It looked really cool. It attracted a lot of buyers who were ignorant that it wasn't really a quality piece, adequately designed. It too was very airsofty as I think this VRB P100 is. Uh, unreliable. Getting back to my philosophy of use, condemnation of the gun the there's no way i would put yet. this in any serious application seems kind of no way yeah. can it be fixed a big maybe i just think it's so airsofty in so many different ways that's jacked up triggers jacked up that's jacked up uh, again the barrel is actually too long for a bullpup i think i think it's ridiculously long go look at the the huh. keltec go look at the keltec ksg that's the overall length the uh, form factor you should shoot for manufacturers i mean that's been out a long time just copy that style of gun at least in overall length compactness you'll have a good starting point uh, that's airsofty no no not reliable i didn't pattern it because it was so disgusting for me to shoot same for tactical doodle we hated it I'm sorry. It's just a negative gun review. I know. It doesn't mean I hate Rock Island Armory. It doesn't mean I hate Arms Corps. Absolutely not. I'm a big fan of value guns. This just seems half-baked to me. It does. It seems half-baked. It's hard to run. Not comfortable. Bad ergos. Got a freaking airsoft spring poking at you right here. It's just hokey, dude. It's hokey. It needs to be redone. Now, are the other guns that this company put together better? The VR80, the VRPP40, the VR60. From what I'm seeing, I doubt it, but maybe I try. Maybe I don't. I, I don't know. It's a non-recommend. A non-recommend. There is absolutely no way I would buy this gun. Uh, the magazines are another problem. They're too damn heavy. They're, it's just a freaking ridiculous gun. I'll take a tube-fed semi-automatic shotgun any day. Mossberg 930, 940, Benelli. FNSLP, Remington, dude, VTAC, oh yeah, I would take that. Those are great. Way, way before I would take this. And I would just deal with the reloading process. Oh yeah, the forend, I hate the forend again. Well, I know, I've reviewed other guns with forends like that, kind of. Tavor comes to mind, I told you it would make an appearance. But there you go, I put a VG on it, bro. And also, this is not a 12 gauge firearm. So it doesn't recoil like this one. This is a 5.56. So even without a VG and a flared front end, which is kind of present here, but not really in the VR100, it's doable. Um, but in a 12 gauge shotgun, hard recoiling buckshot, no thank you. It is a non-recommend. I'm not even going to go over competitive options other than what I have said. Sorry. Oh my goodness. By the way, on the table, a Steel Will Shaula Knife, super awesome, previously reviewed, high value. I think this is in D2, isn't it? Really cool knife. I've got a Pat Labor mech suit I built the boys way back when. I've got a freaking chest burster. <laughs> chest burster, yeah. Lighten everything, by the way. Arms Corps, thank you very much. Uh, AV8B still hanging out, super cool. And this is a 1911 that I have reviewed. Wait for that one, you'll like it. That's a value piece that gets it right. 
Speak of the Devil. So that's a value 1911, super, super inexpensive. It shot amazing P365. Just remember guys, suck less as you go about your life. Thank you for the support. Join TMP Patreon. That's what fuels the fight for truth in my reviews. Nothing fancy. I'm exhausted.